Ingredients are one of the most potent agents to help in this oral recovery program. And then, according to one senior, there was a research conducted on the status of the medical ministry or in the Philippines in 1998. And the data showed that there were 82.25% of the 75 million Filipinos are Catholic. I don't know if this has already decreased or increased. Then 103,259 Catholics are working in the church of Australia. And 81.37% are Catholics. So maybe the figures of the Catholics working in the church of Australia has also increased. And maybe also the number of candidates because this is 1998. So what is the demand now? With the need for more form catechists, I suppose. There, there are fully those who catechists who are fully prepared to journey in faith with the youth of today. But the demands now, we know we always say the youth now are very much different from the youth of how many years ago. Then the need to respond to the needs of the program, program of their plan. Know that there is also a demand for more uh, guides, especially in relation to the K-12 program. And again, we need quality and quantity more catechists serving the country, the church. So in response to this demand, there is now the need to know the present state of the catechetical ministry, not only in our own dioceses or parishes, but this is national in scope. So what would be needed here? We need to know the catechist profile, the catechetical approaches that are relevant and appropriate in today's highly technology-oriented youth. What Mamba gave us this morning is a big help for all of us. It responding to this status now of our youth today. And then, there are the needs of the handicaps and their learning environment. This is very varied. We may be in the private schools, but even in the private schools, they're also different and much more in the public schools where most of our programs are, are serving. So what are the objectives of this study? There are two parts. First is more of a qualitative part of the study, wherein there's a need to understand the history of the Philippine Catechetical Ministry. Where are we now from when this ministry started? There's a need to conduct, the objective is to conduct an institutional analysis of the Philippine Catechetical Ministry. So that's the first part of the, of the project, of the research that we have to be conducted. The part two, first is to de determine the demographic profile of the Filipino catechists for the academic year 2016-2017 because this will be conducted this academic year. And then, there's a need to assess the needs of the Filipino catechists in the teaching ministry. Yesterday, when Father Dix mentioned about one of the projects or programs of the National Catechetical Association, we saw the need for research and development. So, but we have to know where our catechists are, what their needs to do. There's also the goal of identifying the programs for the Filipino catechists continuing formation. So, where we are in terms of the continuing uh, formation of our catechists now, they are making very different, they are making different needs to the different dioceses. But this project will help us see the present status or situation in the church. So what will be the significance of the study? Who will benefit from the study? First is the Philippine Church. So to help recover the moral fiber of the Christian formation of the children, the youth, and adults through improved catechetical programs that are adaptive and sensitive to Filipino context. So that's how the Philippine Church will benefit from this study. Now, what about the catechists? 
they will be provided adequate aid, adequate aid within the context of their careers and their respective learning environments, as well as within the complicated social, political, and economic conditions of the country. You know, I, I'm sure we have feedback from our catechists, as if the catechists present in the different schools when they are asked questions, as if they know how to answer those different questions that are raised to them, not only by the students, but even by teachers and others working or there in the parish. Because why do they, have, they think that they would answer those questions? Because they believe they have received the necessary formation. Now, who else would benefit? The Filipino children, the youth and adults. By, through this study, we can help them in developing and strengthening an intimate relationship with Jesus, which is the main goal of catechesis, and lead them to contribute to the revigoration of their journey of faith and commitment to the challenges of the catechetical ministry. And then for the researchers themselves, to assist them in acquiring a deeper understanding of the current state of our catechetical ministry, in terms of catechist profile and catechetical approach. So the study will reveal this. And for future researchers, because we know that it is continuous, so whatever we will gain, we will get from this study, we will also see later on what more would be needed in the ministry. So this, will, this research will offer a research model investigate topics related to church matters and other social issues. So this is just an introduction and to give you the methodology on how the research will be uh, conducted, we have our friends here from the USD Research Department. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Karim, for putting us in the context no, of this MCS 2016. So, um, siguro po natin, uh, pare parehas ang pagkaintindi natin. Ang tawag natin sa research natin ay MCS 2016. So, ano po ba ito? What is MCS 2016? That's National Catechetical Study 2016. Ayan po. So, kanina nga po, Nabanggit ni Consignor at ni Dr. Karim, this is a project of CBCD Edship that's commissioned to the USD Research Center. This Research Center on Culture, Education, and Social Issues. Um, allow me first to introduce to this assembly the members of our research team headed by our director po ng aming research center, Dr. Clarence Batan. Ako po, Joanne Christy Trosho, isa po akong katekista from General Santos City. So, Bisaya, makasabot ang uban. And then, we will just be, mamaya po magpupantuhan tayo. And then, we have po five faculty members from the U.S. Institute of Religion. One catechetical coordinator po from the Diocese of Gubao, Ms. Carmen Sugita. Nandito si Ms. Carmen. Is Ms. Carmen around? Yes, nandito po. So, nandito siya sa labas. At isa pong nag-aaral ng MA in Pastoral Ministry sa Shana College, Kesley City. So, these comprise our research team. Sabi po nila, kanina po sa context natin, we heard from Dr. Karim that there is really a very important task for us to help in the moral recovery program of the country. So, sino ba yung us? There is a great challenge hurled at us catechists and as religious educators. Ano po raw ba yun? Sabi po sa General Directory for Catechists in 1997, ang isang katekista raw ay binyagan. Naniniwala mo ba kayo? Yes! Ang isang katekista ay tinawag ng Diyos. Naniniwala kayo? Yes! Dahil tinawag tumugon sa tawag, responded to the call. Naniniwala po? Yes! At dahil tumugon sa tawag, Merong formation, okay? Discovering, uh, the discovery of God through the Word of God. Naniniwala po tayo doon? And then the catechist becomes a witness 
e paano po ba nangyayari yan? Pwede po ba pakitaas ng kamay ng lahat ng mga katikista? Lahat po ng naniniwalang sila'y tinawag ng Diyos. Lahat po ng naniniwalang sila'y tumugon sa tawag ng Diyos. Talaga po bang naniniwala kayong tinawag kayo? Kasi po, hindi po ba, pag pinapadala sa mga misyon, katulad ng mga apostoles, they're sent by twos, right? Sino ang ating patron ng mga katikista? San Pedro Kalungsod, ang batang katikista. Tinawag siya, pinadala sa Marianas, tinawag ni Padre Diego, hindi ba? San Lorenzo Ruiz, ang unang, uh, unang santong Pilipino, tinawag ng mga Padre Dominicano, hindi po ba? Ako po'y katikista, pero parang... Nahirapan po akong paniwala ang tinawag ako. Parang medyo tumakas po ako. I'm a graduate of Shana College, Quezon City. Mula po kinder, nasa Shena na po ako. Kaya siguro naging katikista ako dahil nakikita ko itong mga madre dito. Pero hindi ko rin alam kung bakit. But then, way back when we were in first year high school, the first time I was introduced to the catechetical service, nagtawag lang po ng mga ilan na gusto ang amin daw po katikisem sa kabilang barangay o sa kabilang eskwelahan is after recess. I volunteer. I was the first one to volunteer. Why? Because after recess, we have mathematics and science. The subjects I do not like. So it was an escape. Tinawag pa ako, hindi mo tumakas na ako. Pangalawang kwento ng pagtakas. Taong 2008, I was at the... Um, One of the most disillusioned part of my life that year, an invitation from the Dominican Volunteers International came right in time. So I thought, oh God, it's got to be right in time. Kailangan daw ng isang kabataan na mag-volunteer, mag-mission sa Indonesia. Ako yun. Tinawag ba ako, hindi po tumakas lang ako. I was like the most disillusioned part of my life. Pero sa isang buong taon po ng mag-mission ko sa Indonesia, I realized, Perhaps wherever God would give you, He enables, He equips. Tama po, accident na rin. Pero yung accident na yun, maaaring pagtawag. Accident yung tinawag ka, pwede ba yun? Meron po tayo sa ang saling kwento. Marahil kayo rin meron. Yun po ang kailangan natin. The stories to come alive. To let, us, to let these stories not just pass us by. Isulat po natin. Ikwento natin, isulat natin. Game po ba tayo doon? Game tayo doon? Game. Dahil sabi nga, kahit tumakas na ka, sino nga po ba itong propeta na ayaw naman talaga? Si Jonas. Hindi ba? Sabi po, hindi man mapatunay ang totoo, pero si San Lorenzo Ruiz, nung dinala daw ng mga Padre Dominicano sa Japan, tumakas lang sa isang kasong kriminal. Marahil meron pa yung pati ng kwento. Handa na po ba natin ikwento? Handa natin isulat. How will we be able to do this? Let's listen to Doc Yayan. Help us understand the tools. Gawin natin siya ang scholarly, gawin natin ang academic. Pero sa paraan ng pagkukwento marahil, right? So people would understand our stories, people would be inspired by our stories, people would know our stories. And these stories will come alive, right? Eto na po si Dok Yayet para ikwento sa atin. Ano ba yung mga tools na gagamitin natin for the present state of our catechetical ministry? Nabanggit na po yan kanina ni Dok Kadeng. Mahalaga, makita natin ano yung history ng Philippine Catechetical Ministry. Let's check into the institutional um, structure, organizational structure, leadership, bureaucracy ng ating catechetical ministry. Makita natin, no? And then we will go to the demographics, social demographic profiles of our Filipino catechists. Tapos tinan po natin, ano kaya yung mga pangangailangan pa natin? So we will assess the need, uh, felt need, real needs, tinan po natin. And that we will be able to identify programs so that our stories will help build a better Philippine catechetical ministry for the love of God. Okay po? Doc Yayet for the tools. Napakan natin si Dr. John. Gusto niya pong uh, buhayin ang ating mga inaantok na mga kalamnan. Ano po? 
Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. See, um, I was talking uh, to Mother Jess. Actually, sinasabi po niya, pagtakas, story ng pagtakas. Ako po na huli. Hindi po ako tumakas, hindi po ako. Alam niyo po ang totoo po dito, right from the start. Si Father Louie, nakita niya nung makiya ko sa ginawa ng isa sa hindi po. Um, eto, ang kaya pwede ako sa inyo. At ang pati ko kayo, nireject ako ng apat na beses sa seminar kaya hindi ako nangyipare. Four times. I was young. I thought I was being cold. Right? I was rejected four times. So, so hindi ako pare. Pero, alam niyo po, magaling ang paginawan. No? So, in 20, I think in 2010, Si Father uh, Norberto Castillo sabi niya sa akin na dati prepare na na di dati na dati siya sa sabi niya Dr. Batan, can you teach in the seminary? So, I said, Father, I was rejected in the seminary four times. <laughs> and so sabi ko, wow, this is, this is so, so exciting. And so, mukhang nahuli na ako, no? no uh, uh, God led me to a beautiful way to becoming a, an, an academic in the field of sociology. And if you feel like can see it, it's all because of specialization in sociology of youth. Okay? So I look very, very young. Okay? And so when you see me, when you see me, you will never think that I am directing a research center at the University of Santa Tomas, right? Uh, center po ito na ang dating director ay si Father Tony Aguilada. So na-inherit ko po kay Father Tony yung task na ito. So, pag wala na ko, kasi Father Tony na po gagawa nito, right? Uh, so, so, in any case, um, yeah, well, sa, 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 amidst the many, many things na, ano po, na, na ginagawa ko po bilang sociologist, um, meron po isang task, ang um, center po na, ang um, dating social research center, na siya po ang research arm ng CBC. CBC. So, ibig sabihin po, kung meron po mag-aaral, ang isang commission or office, uh, uh, pwede po lumapit. At kung magka-active po kami, ay hindi itutuloy po namin. So, there are many studies that were conducted now for many years. No? I was just fascinated one day when I got a call from the Vice Rector for Research. Sabi po sa akin, uh, Yayet, uh, pwede pa tingnan mo itong request na ito, itong question mo ito. Wala dun sa isang si isang mother, si Mother Jess. So, I never knew Mother Jess. Sabi ko, okay, so, uh, additional work to ito, Vice Rector. Sabi niya, yes, so, but I think this is uh, our obligation and this is an opportunity. But sabi ko, sige po, hindi niyo po kayo. So, nakita ko po yung questionnaire. Sabi ko, oh no, this is a beautiful study. But I have to convene the best of the best and, and really talk to you about the value of this research. Okay? So, sabi ko, oh my, so I need about a month to think about this, to write the concept paper with Dr. Joan and with, with those people from the Institute of Religion. But more importantly, I think kailangan ng lahat ng coordinators and technical coordinators and um, um, ating po educators ng religious education to fully understand why is it important for you and for us to have a systematic investigation of the life of catechists in this country. We have lost a lot of data when I look into how things has evolved. I don't know to what extent could we gather the archival data in order to put together your stories. So I my sister Jess, who nakita ko siya, Mother, kayo ba ay may libro na? Do you have a book on the life of the catechists? Right? Mukhang may reports. Pero, I'm going to give you one simple observation. One simple observation na dahil, maraming mo na ako sa seminar, I'm not a priest, pero I'm usually um, an engaged, um, um, uh, uh, I would say, follower of, of, of Catholic Church. And so, usually, meaning all the sacraments and everything. But, tuwing ano po, tuwing mahal uh, araw, during Holy Week, no? That's a time for us to reflect and everything, no? So, when you go to visit the Iglesia, you go to different bookstores, no? 
from your religious source and look at things that you're going to read about. And you know what, what my, my observation is? I could only read stories, most likely of about 70% or 80% foreign, uh, foreign authors, not local authors. And one of the things that I'm looking forward to reading are the stories of the catechists. Right? Diba? Bakit wala? Bakit wala nagsusulat? Right? Diba? May mga konting pari nagsusulat, but not the catechists in writing. And sabi ko, this might be an opportunity for us to really gather the stories of, 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 of catechists. Systematically. Okay? And because I am a trained social scientist, the methodology I think you just have to know, hindi dapat kami lang nakakalaw ng methodology, and then the analytical techniques we could share, but now let's engage into a national study, but let's see to what extent would you really help us gather authentic data. Authentic data. I see there's a difference between fake debt data and authentic data. You see all the, the social surveys happening, and it's commissioned by a particular office, and the slant would be na inyo nananalo na kandidato doon sa ano nyo. Doon yung nagpa-commission, inyo nananalo, right? Isn't that something corruptive? Diba? To the use of social science in a very corruptive way, politically. But we will not do it here. We want to gather authentic data in the process. Okay? So, how can it be authentic? Eight, na po yun. I've been researching for a number of years. I have written books and reports and published journal articles, etc. Et One thing I'm sure of, when you hear the word research or thesis, what first comes into your mind? Horrible. Matao yan. Pahirap yan. Pero totoo po yun. Yeah, totoo po yun. But the fruits of a systematic investigation, believe me, is beautiful. Okay? I'm teaching in the seminary. I'm teaching in the seminary. Okay? And yesterday I met with 17 seminarians, new ones, no? First day of class. But pass up on the on, I think teachers, no, teachers table. And I do not understand why some of them would not want to come in. And when they came in, they are asking a simple question, is this a sociology class? I said yes, and then I, I, I asked them, in return, are you the teacher? So I mean, no, 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 I'm the student. Ah, it because matter, I think you are, you look older than me. You are more than, are they vocation, they vocation? Me no matter. Right? Oh, and that was my judgment, right? Oh, so, sabi na, oh my! So you are a teacher? Yes, I am your teacher, I think. Right? And then in the midst of all this, there was one seminar who asked me, Dok, Dok ang tawag na sa'yo, Dok, ano po ang edad? What is your age? Sabi na, that's not the right thing to ask, right? Oh, but what is my age? Sabi ko, what is my age? Sabi ko, oh my God, so this is very, very interesting. You're asking me the question what my age is. Ikaw nang sabi, anong age ko? Okay? Sa pati ng sister na yun. Ang magkakama ni sister, ako speaker. Sabi ni yung seminary, 28 daw. I feel good, so we're good. No, 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 30 po, dog. I'm 41. I'm 41. I'm 41 years old, but see, look at yourselves. You look older than me. You just have to look at me to believe in God. Sabi ko sa kanina. Right, dog? That God is good, right? The first wisdom in sociology. This is Peter Berger's... Uh, Invitation to sociology is this one. Things are not what they seem. Things are not what they seem. That's very, very important wisdom in sociology. You start with that. When you look at someone, you are in entitled with so much prejudices and stereotypes, and you think that what you're thinking is the truth to that person. But things are not what they see. 
if you're going to see me roaming around and I will not be introduced as a doctor. Never would you ever think that I finished my doctorate some time ago. Right? Wala, wala. I, I don't go check, right? Meaning, why will I go check, right? Wala, 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 sa akin yun. Ang mahalaga sa akin is I do my profession, right? But we live and we intersect in lives like this, where you judge people. And I tell you, there are so many stories about you and misconceptions about the Catholics. Things are not what they say. That's what we want in this study. For us to let the voices and the truths of the matter about you to emerge. You go share. So, are you with us? Talaga ha? Mahirap to. Pwede na po tayo. So what I'm going to do is to share with you the methodology and then see to what extent will you really help us, right? As explained by Dr. And, and Dr. Jo, um, see, what we're going to do are actually five things. Okay? So, hindi lang po ito survey. Hindi lang po ito survey. This is really, uh, this is really, will be an ongoing uh, uh, study. Uh, ibig sabihin, binilagyan namin ng 2016, baka pwede every two years gawin natin, or every four years gawin natin. Hanggang buhay ka, dapat alam mo na nangyayari ito, mahalagang mag-update ng data. Okay? Now, what do I think of the Filipino government? Why we are like this? What do I think of the Philippine church because of why we are like this? I think, I think, if decisions are made based on empirical basis, if you have empirical basis on decisions, okay, then possibly you could have informed programs. Basically, okay, in the Philippines, and probably not only in the Philippines, you will have laws without any research basis. May mga batas na walang basihan. And this is similar sa mga parokya. Pagpasok ni Father, gagawa siya ng proyekto without even asking anyone about it. It will change if you even ask. I am telling my students, I'm going to teach you research skills. So that when you become formators and you become pastors, and you know how to do proper research, you could use it as a tool to better do pastoral work, right? This is the reason why we're doing it now. Even then, for us to shut up and listen and analyze the data, okay? So, these are five things. Um, five things. Um, okay. These are five things. So, we have the history of Philippine Catechetical Ministry and the methodology that we're going to use is the archival historical analysis. Okay? Siguro right now, binibigyan na po kayo ng ano ng ating uh, templates. No? We're going to use that in a while. Okay? Then we have the institutional analysis of the organizational structure of the Katekatikal the, 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 uh, Ministry. And then we will have this one. Demographic profile with assessments and program identification. So what do I mean by all this? So, can we enter into, uh, into a workshop form? Okay na po ba? I will not make sure, I will just have you have a feel of the study. Okay? So, what I'm going to do is for you to have a feel of the study. And kung sino po mag-respond po sa inyo, yung po magiging kandidat ng output natin. Okay? What do I mean? Often, pag ma-attend ka ng recollection or retreat, or meetings like this, you're given input and you're given an assignment. And then that assignment, pwede mo naman gawin o hindi eh, right? At madalas nakakalimutan mo yan because of the many assignments being given to you by your superior or by your, ano, by your president or whoever, right? I need you to please seriously consider. We need your data. The difference when writing a research versus writing just a non-fiction book is that I could imagine things. Imagine ko na lang, di ba? Tanungin na lang kita, imagine ko na lang, sister. Tapos isusulat ko. No, you can't do that. But that's very violative of the scientific method. Right? Very violative of the scientific method. So, if we gather rich data set, then you could assure that we could write a lot of reports out of it. 
if we don't gather data set and you don't give us data, then we can't write anything about it. Okay? So, I have to make sure that everyone understands that we need your full cooperation to be like researchers now. Okay? Bakit? Dati, research may be like me, a researcher, you, a respondent. Parang gano'n yung 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 ano. Hindi na po ngayon. Lahat po tayo ay researchers. Kasi, hindi pwede palagi kami researchers, kaya lang yung magbibigay ng response, then we will analyze it. May problema yon. Why? Kasi yung main respondents natin, which who are, who happens to be the practitioners, yung mga nasa field, okay, wala na silang time para tulungan tayo to gather this. Okay? Kailangan namin kayong coordinators to coordinate this data for us so that we could gather it. Okay? And when we are able to gather it, then you need a report for your diocese, for your archdiocese, for your pedipotion ikal. Kunyari, you just want a report for your diocese, narito yung whole data set, ikal mo lang, kunin mo lang yung sayo. Naitindihan niyo pa kung bakit national siya. Why? Kasi madalas, pwede ka naman gumawa si Stern ng study mo sa community mo. And that's it. Pero iba-iba yung variables sa ginawa, ginamit natin, kaya pag ginocompare, hindi mo pwede compare. Now, this is an opportunity for us to use one form in order for us to compare and contrast, right? In order for you to have your own data set, okay? If only I could teach your community to how to archive documents and how to do basic community profiling, hindi ako masaya ito. Kasi maaaring may libro kayo every year, okay, to gather that. But let's just have a view of how we're going to do it, okay? So, hindi ito perfect, but we're trying our best to entice you to believe in the project, no? Okay, research tools. Okay, so, what you have here is this one. This one. This, this is composed of four things. Four things. I'm going to explain ano po ako, kung ano po yung mahalaga dito. We're going to, ano po, we're going to share with you in this input. Alis na ako dito, pumunta na ako sa ibang program. Okay? Okay. Very good. So, yung katalimikan po, hindi ko po naintindihan. Ano po ibig sabihin po dito? <laughs> Nainis po ba kayo sa akin? Huwag po kayo mainis ba ito? Madalas kinakailisan at lahat na nagtutulong ng thesis. Sa ano, alam nyo ako, marami na ako nagtulungan. Si Father alam nyo, sa ano, sa, sa graduate school. Uh, ang hirap mag... Alam mo yun, ang hirap na pagkatapos ng thesis writing na hindi nang pa mo. Ang advising mo. Napakailang po noon, naranasan nyo po yan. Diba? Hanggat ngayon, may galing ka pa sa advisor mo, right? Alam mo yun, parang... Uh, ito na rin. Pwede naman masaya ang research. Kaya nga, let's make it, you know, lahat ng, ng konti, ano na, maraming maraming dito, ayaw ko na mag-MA, ayaw ko na mag-PhD. Ano ba? Ito nyo na si Father Tony, you know? Kami nagmamanage doon, we could make it fun. Ha? Kailangan namin ng maraming, ano, ng maraming nag-isip. Kasi sa rami ng topics, right? Hindi naman namin pwede basta general, general, general. So, kailangan natin yung specialist in many topics when it comes to Catholic Church, right? And so, ganun katikisim pa lang to, we could produce a lot of thesis and dissertations here. Believe me, if the data that will be gathered will be good, okay, we could produce a lot of thesis and dissertations about this. Kung yung data is authentic, okay? And we will, we will have a way to know kung magiging authentic or not, right? We, we need to know, right? Kasi papakita natin sa mga experts, did we gather it well? Was, was the data authentic? Can it be validated? Is it reliable? All those things, no? Pag dumating ang puntos that you gave me data na alam ko errorful, meaning, ginawa lang to under the santo tree. <laughs> Dahil alam ko, sinabi niyang male siya, sinabi niyang married siya, tapos sinabi siya hindi siya Catholic. So, ibig sabihin, sa eligibility question, hindi na siya pwede. There are many ways to decipher if the respondent is pulling me. Okay? So, authentic data. Mahalaga mahalaga yan. Okay. Let me share with you um, workshop participants form. 
Okay, so in the next few minutes, probably it will take us about 20 or 10 or 20 or 30 minutes, no? Um, and that will be the end of my life. Good. Kasi alam nyo, if there's one thing na mapapansin nyo pag nag-iisip, nagunta, nagunta ka. O nga, pag nag-iisip ka, nagunta ka, right? Ngayon, pag hindi ka nagunta, may nangyayari. <laughs> hindi ka nag-iisip. Okay, after, after the session, tapos sasabihin mo, anita, break na. Gusto pa, ano pa tayo? Wala nangyari, natulog ka lang sa session. Hindi ka nag-iisip, right? No? So, sigurado ako, maghanda po kayo kasi medyo... Sister, I don't know what to do together because I would like to make to to I would like you to think. Okay, now this is it. Sabi ni si Mother Kalika, gusto mo ba na mag-divide sila into groups? Kasi na divide na naman sila into groups. Sabi ko nung sister, kasi sa group isa lang yung nag-iintu. Talagang talagang yung iba talagang ah oh yes I agree. I agree. Oh, ngayon, individual work time. Eh, individual work, no. I hope the Holy Spirit will be here. Sabi ko, I don't, kay, kay Mother Jess. Sa rami na ginagawa ko, nang may hindi ako maintindihan. Na, and I think, alam na yung kay Father Tony. Kasi, when, when Father Tony asked me to do something for, for his theology course, so I put up na ako, ang dami kong gagawin. Pero alam mo, there's something about doing something beyond what is really academic like this. Kasi alam mo naman hindi para sa school na, alam mo para sa simbahan. Nasabi ko, sister, alam nyo, magaan ang dating ng project na sa akin. Hindi ko alam mo naroon na may show na para naglalaro lang ako dito. Right? Ako. Kasi alam ko naman hindi ako magagawa nito kayo. Kaya nga nagbibigay niya ako ng orientation. Right? Ako. And it's the same thing na ginawa kay Father. Father! Kasi naman si Father, sabi sa akin, I need to understand that theology is something. Sabi ko, Father, I'm a sociologist. Wala akong alam sa theology, right? I need to have a partner, a katikista this time, mga katikista, kaya na si Sister Carmen kasama namin palagi, para maintindihan ko yung kalagal. Which is good. Kasi hindi ako within the realm. Okay ba yun? Di ba? Hindi ako yung masyadong involved. So, dahil nakikita ko yung what the other side is. Pero kailangan ko ng mga participants from you. Okay? So, so ganun yung ano, ganun yung dynamics, right? Today, in the next 30 minutes, how about in the explain ko po ang mga bagay-bagay? May ballpoint po ba kayo? Yes. Yes, good. Oo. Provided po kayo ng conference. Yes. Oo. Oh, oh. Yan po ay ginagamit, hindi po yung dinidisplay. Kasi nung meron po ako napapansin na ako sa observahan ko lang, yung iba lahat ng conference, yung mga ballpoint nakita, dinidisplay lang nila. Ginagamit po yan ako, para po mapakilabangan. Bigyan niyo po ito sa mga walang ballpen. Ano po? Pantis kayo pang museo, right? Ito po, ang gagawin niyo po is habang nag-explain po ako ng mga bagay-bagay ng tool. Ano yung sabihin ng tool? Yung literature review, yung theoretical premise, yung initial history, kami na po bahala doon. Kasi literature review bahala na kami doon. And we're going to write the intro. Si Mother siguro mag-i-intro, si Lynn Doctora, hindi ko alam, o si Monsi, o si Bishop, I don't know. Wala pa problema doon, okay? Ang pinang problema ko ngayon is yung data. Yung data. Yung pagpukunan ng istorya ng report, right? And so, yung po ang explain ko sa inyo. Pagkuha po, pag sinabi niyo po mag-research po kayo, what makes it different is that you have a methodology of doing it. Right? Methodology of doing it. So this will be a mixed method, both quantitative and qualitative. We will be the one to take good care of the analysis part. Right? What we need are data. Okay? Now, we have developed tools in order to gather the data. And this tools are, can actually be adapted by your organizations. I do not care if we're going to use it over and over again to simplify it, to clarify it. Bahala po kayo. Basta malaga today is the day where you, the Holy Spirit asked you and requested you to play like research researchers. No? Papatubayan po tayo ng Panginoon dyan. No? Kasi madali lang to. Yung mga teachers lang sinasabi na hirap. Madali lang to. Madali lang po ito. Okay? So, how about in-explain ko po ang lahat ng to, yung historical institutional document template, yung pong survey instrument, yung interview theme guide, saka focus group discussion. Kung meron po kayo observations, kahit phrase, term, ilagay nyo lang po dyan. Okay? Kung meron po kayo suggestion, kahit phrase, term, ilagay nyo po dyan. 
At kung meron pa po kayong additional comments, ilagay nyo rin po. The first thing that you're going to do is, ito, madalas nakakalimutan ito, ng lahat ng mga nagdo-document. Okay? Kaya lahat ng mga, uh, ano ito, lahat ng mga estudyante ko, yun ang unang-una kong sinasabi sa kanila. Pag ikaw ay, kung gusto mo nung lang na mag-document na maayos, do it very, very well. Now, I have a very simple question to you. When you attend, when you are somewhere, and you want to write down something, your ideas or whatever. What, are, what is the first thing that you do? What are the things that you need to write immediately? Name, date, place. Palahin ka na. Palahin ka na. Name, date. Kunyari, meron kang idea. Name, place, date. Mahal na siya. Alam niyo kung bakit? In the, uh, in, in the study of, of memory, meron pang mga study ng memory, and interpretations of memory. Alam niyo po yun, kunyari may document ka at may sinulat ka. Hanggang hindi mo nalalaman kung kailan mo siya sinulat, saan mo siya sinulat, hindi mo ma-recall the whole context of the story. Naintindihan niyo po? Yung po, it makes sense. It makes sense kasi pinag-aralan naman siya. So first things first, write your name, your ecclesiastical territory. Do you know what your ecclesiastical territories are? I heard from the underground that there are Catholics who do not understand what their ecclesiastical territories are. Is that true? Is that true? Ah, we do not know. Makikita natin sa survey yun. Pag mali-mali yung ecclesiastical territory na inaano yun. Right? Then, parish assignment, siguro naman, alam niyo na po yung parish. Saka po yung date of fortune. That's the first thing that you're going to do. You're going to submit that today. Now, before 12. Are we good? Oh, this is so nice, no? I never thought that one is... Center, sige, gawin yung centers. Sige po, gawin yung lang center po. Yan, yan ang gusto ko sa Easter talaga. Very active participant, no? Maganda po yan. Pagka may nag-respect, pagka ano po, pagka nag-interview na po yung iba sa inyo, dahil binigyan po na yung pagkata mag-interview. We will have some, some basic workshop on that. Pero minsan, sister, ganun talaga, no? Tama yung ginawa mo, right? Tapos sinasabi mo, Nung nag-asawa po kayo, ano po nangyari? Ay, hindi, sinabi ko na kanina na wala akong asawa. Tapos, pinuwi ko na naman. Ay, kumusta po yung husband niyo, di ba? Magbabatukan mo yung nag-interview, right? Kasi nga, sinabi na nga sa'yo na hindi siya asawa. Tapos, nung po sa pangang asawa, tinatanong mo, right? Kaya, tinayin niyo po. So, mahalaga yan, mahalaga yan. So, 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 write and see what you think may improve our instrument. Okay? So that we could start this, uh, mother, siguro mga one to two months, no? Uh, tapos i-launch na natin para tuloy-tuloy siya. Okay? So, let's look into the historical institutional ano po, uh, document template. Yan. Okay. Medyo balik po dito, pero malaki naman po dyan sa rapain. Okay? Okay. So, ano yung ibig sabihin nito? May dalawa po tayo dapat gawin. Una, gusto po namin maintindihan yung history ng catechesis, catechetical ministry. Yung pangalawa, yung institution itself. Sino yung naging head, uh, uh, sino yung naging... Kasi napaka, napaka vibrant. Iba-iba yung inaasay na pali. Iba-iba. Tama mo ba ako? Okay. So, ngayon, hindi ko alam kung may living historian kayo dun sa parish nyo na mga pagsasabi, hindi, si Father Munay, unang naging assignment, assigned dyan. Tapos sumunod na ganito, sumunod sa ganito, right? I don't, I don't have any, ano, I don't have any uh, idea, right? How do we make it better in order to have some kind of historical basis of whatever it is that we're going to write about those two things, sa institutional history, sa kay structure? Magkaiba po yun, ha? Yung kasaysayan po ng mga katekisim, eh, nag-offer ng, 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 ng katekisim, kasama ba yung public school, yung private school, hindi ko alam yung dynamics, eh. Iba-iba yun sa bawat parish. Iba-iba yun sa bawat territory, no? Uh, hindi ko alam kung paano siya i-organize, pero let's see kung anong theme ang lalabas. But you need to capture it. Bakit? Pag nag-capture nyo yun, pwede yun sa inyo yun. Kayo yun, sa inyo yun. Hindi, hindi sa amin, right? All that you're going to give us are copies of the documents that you're going to send us. In fact, I will never ask an original document from you. It will always scan, and you're going to send it to us. Because the original documents belong to you. 
That's a big problem for those doing ano, archival work, no? Lalo na yung hindi alam yung value dun sa, dun sa ano nila, sa parish nila. You give away everything. Sa mga researcher, patay. Di ba? Value mo, pinamigay mo yung lahat-lahat ng mga specimen and everything, and then you end up discovering after 100 years that it's in the United States of America. That all you have is just a copy of the picture. Di ba? I believe that your parish has a lot of beautiful archival historical documents. Never gave them up. Just make a copy. And for here, ito ang gagawin natin. Right? Now, how do you do it? Okay? Ito, hindi ginagawa madalas natin. Because this is really, uh, you know, a time, ano, time. Pagpagawa ba ng time? Talagang, it, it will require you to document it. How? These are the guide questions. Why you need to identify the document? What type of document of is this? Is this a book? Is this a newsletter? Is this a photo? What type of media uh, media uh, output? Is it a video? Right? Is the type that, uh, is the document? There is a title. Does it have a title? There is a title. Kung wala, okay lang, right? Pero kailan siya ginawa? Time element, okay? Any context ng pagkakaproduce ng document, like the newsletters, for example, right? 